Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Hope's answer to Thomas's proposal infuriates Steffi. On one knee in the showroom, Thomas held up the ring to Hope and promised to be a wonderful father and husband. He asked her to say she'd marry him. He designed that dress for what he'd hoped would be one of the most significant moments in their lives. He felt that the ring deserved to be on her hand and he wanted the world to see them walking side by side into the future. All she had to do was say she'd marry him. Hope removed the ring from Thomas's hand. Thomas insisted that they'd squandered enough time and it was a make-or-break moment. It was time for them to be together with the kids as a family. He asked her to say she'd be his wife. Tearing up, Hope replied that she adored him, but she couldn't accept his proposal. She wasn't ready. Hope professed not to want to hurt Thomas. You're turning me down again, he uttered. She said it had nothing to do with him, and he brought her pleasure and happiness. She knew that he loved her unconditionally, but she'd just gotten out of a marriage. She was attempting to focus on herself, her career, the kids, and her relationship with him. She told him that she adored him, but she wasn't ready for a forever commitment. As she apologized, he fled from the room. In Eric's office, Steffi toiled behind the desk. She was astonished when Liam arrived. Liam said he'd thought about making up an excuse, like he was dropping something off for Kelly, but he was there out of concern for Steffi regarding Finn's reaction to Sheila's demise. Steffi assured Liam that her relationship with Finn was normal and she wasn't worried about them. Instead, she was concerned about Thomas. Liam asked what was wrong with Thomas. What do you think? Hope. Steffi replied. She said Hope was wearing Thomas's ring around her neck, and it was ridiculous because Hope didn't adore him and would never truly commit to him. Steffi believed Hope was stringing Thomas along. Liam didn't want Hope with Thomas at all. Shrugging, Liam said, eh, maybe if I'd handle things differently. Steffi asked what he was talking about and asserted that Hope was always the victim, lamenting the end of the marriage when she'd been the one caressing Thomas in Rome. She's not so innocent, Steffi added. Liam thanked Steffi for acknowledging it because not many people did. Steffi asserted that she was losing patience with Hope, who was messing with Thomas's feelings the way she'd mess with Liam's, leading Thomas on and making him believe she'd marry him. Steffi proffered her belief that Hope had been out of control ever since she'd broken up with Liam and become laser-focused on Thomas. Steffi believed her sibling was in for a world of hurt. Liam said Hope could be in for it too, but whatever happened, Liam felt that he and Steffi could concur that Hope and Thomas were a toxic combination. Later, Steffi returned to the office and found Thomas there. Upset, he said he'd been ready, but it hadn't happened. He called himself an imbecile and said he'd asked Hope to marry him again. Steffi presumed Hope had turned him down again. Knowing it would happen, Steffi said he didn't deserve it, and Hope was terrible news. Thomas didn't get what he'd done wrong. He'd given Hope the ring, and she'd been wearing it. As a necklace, Thomas, Steffi said. Thomas stated that he'd offered it to Hope, and she hadn't refused it. There had been potential, and she hadn't rejected it. Steffi told him that he was setting himself up, and Hope would never give him what he desired. He asked Steffi not to say it. What Hope had just done proved it in Steffi's eyes. She said Hope claimed to adore him but would never commit. Steffi advised him to move forward and concentrate on a future without Hope. At the Cliff House, Finn asked Poppy what Luna's desire to talk to her birth father had to do with him or what he could do to assist. Poppy asked him to give Luna what she was searching for more than anything. Talk to her, Finn, Poppy requested. Finn had no difficulties talking to Luna, but figuring she preferred her father, he asked if Poppy knew who the man was. Poppy replied that Luna had been conceived in love. Finn figured Poppy had known the day would arrive that Luna would want to know who her father was, and he suggested that she let it happen. Poppy replied that it had always been the two of them, and that had been enough. Finn reasoned that it might have been for Poppy, but Luna might not have wanted to upset Poppy by confessing to needing her father. Poppy stated that Luna required a strong male presence in her life, and Finn could easily fill the shoes because Luna looked up to him. She asked him to be that presence in Luna's life. Finn was glad to be there if Luna needed him or didn't need him. Finn remarked that Poppy had watched after him when he'd been Luna's age. Poppy affirmed it and remarked that he'd become a doctor with a beautiful family, and she had an adult daughter with a mind of her own. Poppy missed the days when Luna would take her cue from her mother, who'd always been able to steer Luna clear of the topic of her father. Finn replied that, as Luna's cousin, he felt it was time that Luna knew who her father was. At Luna's place, Luna was sorry to be emotional in front of Bill, but he assured her that she could speak to him. 
Bill figured he might be able to assist or offer her guidance. Luna said that her mother had been like a best companion to confide in, but now... Bill assumed Luna felt she needed her father to speak to, but Poppy hadn't revealed who that was. Luna asked if Bill thought she deserved to know. Bill replied that his thoughts didn't matter because it was between Luna and Poppy, but he had asked Poppy if he was the father. Luna replied that it wasn't Bill and Poppy was wrong to keep apart a father and daughter who deserved to know each other. Bill asked if it had occurred to Luna that Poppy knew something Luna didn't. Like he's a bad person, she inquired. Bill didn't intend that, but he was certain Poppy had Luna's best interests at heart with the decision. Luna apologized for her emotions, but Bill liked that she trusted him with her feelings. She noted his kind eyes and supposed they'd been the first thing Poppy had noticed about him, too, because the eyes were the windows to the soul. Bill acknowledged that his eyes didn't always reveal the best part of him, but they had the night he'd met Poppy. Bill disclosed that he had to be careful about women because of his fortune. Luna said Poppy didn't care about money and Bill replied that it was why he was so drawn to Poppy, who reared a remarkable daughter. Bill asserted that Luna's father would be pleased to have her as a daughter. He asked what he could do to assist Luna without stepping on Poppy's role. Luna didn't know. She stated that she really liked Bill and pondered if he really could be her father. Bill told her that she'd be filthy wealthy, but Luna replied that she didn't care about money. Bill joked that it meant she couldn't be his daughter and they chuckled. Steffi unleashes fury on Hope, Brooke's surprise help for Thomas. The Bold and the Beautiful, BMB spoilers for Tuesday, March 19th, reveal that Steffi Forrester, Jacqueline McInnes Wood, will grow increasingly furious with Hope Logan, Annika Noel, for turning down Thomas Forrester's, Matthew Atkinson. Second marriage proposal attempt. Although Hope assured Thomas of her devotion, she just isn't ready to make that kind of commitment. That's understandable considering how fresh Hope's divorce is. But Thomas is obviously hurt, and now Steffi is further convinced that Hope is stringing him along. Steffi just told Thomas to let Hope go and focus on a future without her, but he already told Rich Forrester, Torsten K., that he can't imagine his existence without Hope in it. Thomas has a joyful relationship with Hope, even if there's no marriage certificate involved. Once Thomas gets over his initial anguish over the rejection, he may start to see Hope's side of all this a bit more. It hasn't been that long since Thomas first proposed, back when he assured Hope that he understood her desire to wait and that he didn't want her to feel any pressure. Now Thomas is going against all that and undoubtedly pressuring Hope to be his wife. Maybe Thomas will eventually start to focus on the enterprise I love you, Hope finally gave him and comprehend that's all that matters right now. However Steffi will feel like Thomas is waiting for a yes that will never arrive. As far as Steffi's concerned, Thomas could give Hope all the time in the world and it still wouldn't be enough to get a marriage commitment out of her. Hope will undoubtedly come looking for Thomas later to see if he's okay and find Steffi instead, so that'll set the stage for Steffi to unleash her fury. Meanwhile, BMB spoilers indicate Thomas will cross paths with Brooke Logan, Catherine Kelly Lang, in the design office, so he may give her updates on the news of Hope's latest rejection. Brooke might acknowledge that she's happy her daughter isn't rushing into anything and contend that Hope just wants to get marriage right the next time around. Since Hope and Liam Spencer's Scott Clifton own marriage ended in disaster, Brooke may persuade Thomas to see why Hope would be scared of taking such a huge step. Real love is about compromise and respect, so Brooke might become a surprising source of guidance for Thomas as he navigates this rejection. The bold and the beautiful spoilers say Hope and Thomas have some challenges ahead. So stay with us for more predictions on all the highs and lows.